bad for Brad since that next season? What does it look like? What does the future look like for you? I, I mean, I don't know. I let the coaches deal with that. I know Coach Sherman just, just told us a little story. I want to get your version of it. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> no, no, no. No, okay. Not okay, cool. <laughs> Did you go into your phone yesterday and block any unfamiliar? Oh, yeah, I blocked uh, every contact in my phone except coaches and my mom because she's traveling down here today. I had to make sure she'd get here safe. But, yeah, it took me like 40 minutes to block everybody in my phone. <laughs> so the only people who can still call you is what? Uh, yeah, the coaches who are here and uh, just my mom. No teammates? Nah, because I'm going to see them all over anyway. So I blocked them too. Just to eliminate as much distraction as possible. Just to eliminate, you know, the phone calls and text messages. Have you had a problem with you been getting kind of I mean, not necessarily, but, you know, I just want to put that much more into my preparation. I mean, like I said before, you know, that's up to the coaches, and that's a, you know, that's a point we haven't reached yet. I mean, to me, in my opinion, and, and the best thing for my uh, teammates and me to do is to prepare for this game. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. The season's not over, you know, and um, me personally, I don't think I prove anything, so, and, I, and I don't go out to prove anything to no one but my teammates. I mean, like I said, I don't know, because I don't, I don't think like that at all. You know, I just want to do what I can to help my teammates and help this team win. What has this last five, six weeks been like for you to quarterback and now playing a chance to win a national championship? It's almost like it's been on the script. I mean, this is unreal, man. I mean, it's just like a freaking movie or a book. You know, I mean, the best way I can describe that is basically just unreal. Never wake up Definitely, definitely. Every time someone asks me, I'm like, yeah, I'm pinching myself. I can't pinch myself any harder, so I guess I won't wake up. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, unless he plays DB or defensive line, I'm not going against him. You know, you should ask some of them defensive guys that, I mean, I won't even get a chance to watch him play because, you know, when I'm on the sideline, I'm, I'm locked into the headsets or my coach has got to say and uh, preparing for the next drive. So, I mean, I don't see how quarterbacks play against each other. <laughs> Cardell, from the quarterback position, looking at their defense, they have been kind of a bend but don't break defense, but they create a lot of turnovers. High and tight if you're running the ball, throw it away if you feel the pressure so you don't give that offense uh, the short field to work with. Yeah, definitely. Just protecting the ball. You know, we don't go out and say don't turn the ball over. We go out and say protect the ball. You know, just try to stay positive about everything and just try to take advantage of every opportunity we have. How important, though, when you get in the red zone where last week early on you guys had to settle for field goals on two first and goal situations, especially against this team with that offense, to get touchdowns instead of field goals? It's very important. You know, we... We don't want to set up for touch. I mean, for field goals um, against anybody. You know, we want to score in the red zone. That's one of our uh, plans to win. So I mean, it's going to be that much important, and because not just because it's the offense, just because it's the national championship. Facing a, a situation like this, your time at Ed Fleming, Coach Ginn, how much has that prepared you for big games like this? I mean, a lot. But my preparation since I have been here has been completely different from uh, high school because of the, you know, high school you don't have to read too many, too much defense. In high school, you know, coaches really don't game plan for you like that. So the preparation has, I mean, Glenville has prepared me for this, but the preparation that it has now is, I mean, it helped me. So. You talked about turnovers a minute ago, and Michael Palmer working a momentum-based team. Uh, certainly we've seen when they get up on people, you know, they can throw it away. Your thoughts on Uh, we want to get off to a good start each and every game versus anybody, but like you said, because they have a momentum-based team and, you know, their offense have the ability to score so fast and to keep scoring, you know, it's, it's very important to protect the football in this game. Ezekiel Elliott, what's he meant to your success the last two games and how important of a factor will he be on Monday night? Every, everything. I mean, not just him, but the offense and the offensive line has meant so much to me and, uh, and our team because they take so much pressure 
not just off me, but off the defense. You know, when we can, you know, convert third downs with runs, when we can break uh, long runs, that takes so much pressure off myself, basically helping me let me know I don't have to do everything by myself or don't even let that mindset creep into my mind. What is more likely to happen? You overthrowing Devin Smith? Oh Devin man, outrunning you. I'm saying overthrowing, overthrowing, by far overthrowing. So you, you can overthrow his speed? <laughs> I don't know, man. Me and him go back and forth with that just to joke around to see if he can outrun my arm while I can overthrow him. But I, I mean, I don't know. I don't, you know, if I got a helmet on a go route, I'm going to say, let me see if I can overthrow him. Let me see if I can get him the ball. Do so. you expect Oregon to gang up against the line and try and make you beat them? Um, no, I don't think that, you know, they're going to load the box or do anything we haven't prepared for because, you know, this team has, they've been doing what they've been doing these past 14, 15 games to get here. So change their their mindset and change their uh, structure for us, I, I don't think so. Now, what, what are some parts of your pregame routine? Do you like to stay by yourself and sort of engage a lot of your teammates, listen to a particular kind of music? What do you do in the uh, it's definitely the music, you know, the, um, before we get on the bus, it's a lot of kind of rap and hip hop music, but when we get into that, you know, facility or get off the bus, it, it turns into more of a slow, maybe somewhat R&B style music to, you know, help calm me down, but as far as the hype guy, no, I'm, I'm not that at all for the team. <laughs> Hey, uh, John Legend. Yeah. What sticks out to you? Just a couple of more phone calls, a couple of more text messages, and just uh, being recognized almost everywhere I go. That's about it. I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but that, that's not why I play the game. What sticks out to you? Watch that defense. Um, they are. Uh, they are underrated and they don't get as much credit as they deserve, you know. Um, one thing that really sticks out to me is the um, the way they play as a unit. You know, they don't blow many coverages, they don't miss many tackles. I mean they don't they don't make many solo tackles. It's a lot of guys to the ball. So that's one thing that really sticks out to me. Knowing how many points they typically put up, do you let that get into your mind at all about I mean, we need to score a lot of points versus anyone. You know, we want to score every time we touch the ball. But, I mean, it, it, it don't want to add any pressure or any uh, motivation to us as the offense because, like I said, we want to score, period. What did you take away from there when you talk talking about the Florida State and the Rose Bowl Oregon today? Um, impressive. You know, they put up that many points on a great Florida State defense, and they held that great offense to 20-something points and um, caused so many turnovers from a team that's, you know, that's not known for that. I mean, it's been really oppressive to, when I um, heard the score at the end of the game, I was shocked, and I watched the game, and I was even more shocked. Cardell, how have you been able to stay mentally focused through this entire season in a backup, backup role, and then you're thrown into the, the spotlight, and it seems like you've been prepared for that the whole time? I mean, it's been tough, you know, to stay mentally focused because, you know, you're not the guy, you're not getting the many reps, you're not getting, um, you're not getting the start on them, you know, to say. And um, the preparation has really kept me mentally focused and the job that Coach Herman and Coach Meyer has, you know, what they expectations, you know, as a quarterback, not just a starter, as a backup for, you know, each guy to prepare like they're the starter. Is you were on the sidelines when you weren't playing, were you taking the mental reps when the play call was going in and oh, yeah. knowing what was going because you were always one snap away? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Staying engaged on the headsets and, uh, you know, trying my best to read the defense from that eye look from the sideline to, you know, trying to get a picture of the field. But, you know, understanding what the coach is seeing from top, understanding what plays and why we run it, that's how I stay engaged. What would it mean to you to see Eddie George standing next to me yeah. right here, right, working yeah. for uh, College Sports Nation? What would it mean for you to win a national championship? And here's this guy covering you. I mean, it would mean a lot, you know, because it's freaking Eddie George. You know, Heisman <laughs> Trophy winner, great running back here at Ohio State. I mean, like, it, yeah, it would mean a lot. <laughs> Cardinal, what's become more comfortable for you in the last few weeks, whether it's practice, reps, leg reps? What's been different? What's something that feels more comfortable? Um, I just say, you know, just taking on the role as the starter and taking on that role as, you know, 
not being able to do certain things now and then carrying yourself a certain way, that has become more comfortable. I think we got it under control. I'm here with Cardell Jones. He's uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, and that that helped us as a team, not just the offense, but as a defense as well. Cardell, when you look at the defense, uh, you know their outside guys and their outside linebacker or would, would be a DN. Uh, Tony Washington, one of them, known for running down quarterbacks, strip sacks, those kinds of things. What uh, What are your thoughts on their defense, their front row? They they are they play it's together, three, but right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they play together. You know, they play hard, and um, they like I said, they play for each other. And I mean, you never really see one guy on the ball. You see about two, three, four of them guys making a tackle, bringing a guy down. I mean, you know, we were just watching before we got here. It looked like the quarterback was gonna break, and one of the guys came up from behind and just you know walked them down because they didn't they don't give up. So it's just, it's just, it's going to present a challenge to us, you know, to finish plays. Not yet, you know. I only played two games with these guys, but that, that's a, that's a, you know, you you just don't say you part of that guys because the way they play, how hard they play, and how they play for each other. So, hopefully after this game and you know going through spring and a couple of more games, I can get that tag. <laughs> All right, now you guys got me there, finally, right? They are. Okay, we'll try to. They, they some close guys, man. And, um, they love each other, you know, and they play for each other, and they play for the guy behind them. Oh, I thought you was giving me something. <laughs> yeah, a lot, actually. Yeah, we hang out a lot. If, we, if we're not at uh, Daryl Baldwin's house, we either at uh, Pat Fline and um, Taylor Decker's house or just around um, our facility, just clowning with these guys before practice, even before I was a starter. Cardell, so listen, I, I was impressed by your play last week against Alabama. You were mad in the pocket, you trying to hunt the safeties up and run <laughs> through them. But I was so impressed when you went to the Alabama Crimson Tide fan section, told them to get louder when you pinned back at the owners. Where did that, where does this confidence come from? I mean, this confidence just, you know, comes from not just, you know, the confidence I have in myself, but the confidence I have, my teammates have in myself. And um, just wanting to, you know, just show them that, that noise not going to affect us. I mean, I really can't hear it when the play going on anyway, so. <laughs> now, in terms of this the national championship game, you seem not moved at all playing in the Big Ten championship game. Of course, last week you were uh, totally into the game with, against Alabama. This being for it all, how have you approached this week? I'm not going to sit here and say it not it's like any other week because it's not you know try to add a couple of more couple of more hours to film study try to add a couple of more hours to um, just preparation in the mental part of the game is there anything that uh, you would expect Oregon to do knowing that this would be your third start um, if you expect them to come at you differently run different blitzes uh, do different things you haven't seen them do on film no, not really, because, you know, these guys got here by, you know, sticking to within themselves and doing what they do. You know, I don't think they're going to change anything or or try to confuse me. They're going to line up and play play football, and, you know, they feel like they, they best are is better than our best. Have you had a chance to talk with Braxton Miller and JT Barrett about this, this run that you've been on? Have they been uh, kind of coaching you up as well uh, in terms of preparing for this game? I mean, not really coaching up and preparing for the game. We're just making sure that even when Braxton and JT was a starter, we just stayed on each other about, you know, knowing what's going on in every situation. But them coaching me up, let me know what to do. I mean, the best advice they gave me is, you know, do you. Play within yourself and do what you got to do. All right, last question. Which nickname are you going to go with this week? <laughs> 12 Gauge. I, I love 12 Gauge. 12 <laughs> Gauge going dunk hunting. Talk to tail. Here we go. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hope I still have pictures and videos and all this stuff still around because she wouldn't believe me. <laughs> how has she really changed your life as far as uh, maybe puts everything in perspective? You said how? Is how has it changed your life? Uh, just knowing that when I wake up and do what I got to do, it's just not for myself anymore. No, we're just talking types over there. He um, said that you were a quote unquote awful cook. You're going to try taco salad, I hear? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we always well. You should see our apartment. There's no type of food in there, and um, 
I was watching the food channel. I'm like, yeah, I think I can make taco salad. So <laughs> definitely. He said that everybody should pray for you guys for that. Huh? He said that you guys every every should pray for him. Oh yeah, definitely. Because um, actually, before we start cooking, I'm gonna go buy a fire extinguisher to make sure you know we don't burn the house down. <laughs>